Hi everyone, I'm uh, Emrek, the founder of Wikplan, and today I'm going to, to speak with Max um, Hindle. Is that, do I pronounce yeah, it right? Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Or Maximilian. Is that, is that, uh, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's it. So, so you're, a, you're a coach, and uh, today I will uh, ask you questions around uh, the people you, you coach and uh, what tips you, you have for, for them. So t tell me, um, like, uh, uh, as a general uh, thing, what, what, what do you do? What, what it is that uh, sets you apart? So my whole ethos is all around the subconscious mind. Now, when I was younger, I used to be the least confident, the least happy. I, I just had nothing. I really had nothing. And I realized that the subconscious mind was the most powerful bridge stopping me from getting where I wanted to be. And when you learn to reprogram the subconscious, anything is truly possible and it helps with things like if whether you're more into the law of attraction whether you're more into um whether you're not into the law of attraction the subconscious mind still helps you regardless whatever it is and that's my thing is just reprogramming the subconscious for happiness health and success in life so self-love is one of the topic that um you you suggested and i think uh, that's quite interesting how do you, um, what, what are some of these uh, tips you, you could give to someone who knows that their internal voice is telling them that they're crap, they can't do it, they, mm -hmm. can't, uh, they can't do what they, 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 they are set to do? Uh, how, how do they get out of that um, bad habit? Okay, so essentially it starts, there's many different ways to reprogram because this is all subconscious mind. Like if, if you are telling yourself every single day, you're worthless, you're useless, things like that, that is a subconscious program that's constantly playing in the back of your mind. Essentially, you have to, you have to make the break and you have to be able to say, there's different techniques that I use personally, um, but to do this alone, it's more than possible. It just takes a little bit longer, but it essentially is just feeding the mind Re, like re, reducing the amount of negativity you're seeing completely just taking that away and feeding it with positive so for example when i first started on my journey i had such a weak mind i was i was taking a lot of drugs i was in the completely in the wrong place and i was a, i wasn't around people that were lifting me up so i had to cut all the negativity and that's where i started listening to audiobooks positive videos affirmations meditations things like that so that all i was taking in was positive um, and that was probably the easiest thing for me because I couldn't take the negative. If someone told me it's not possible for you to make it, I'd be like, oh, is it? Is it not? But then when I'd start to listen to people like Tony Robbins and stuff like that, I'd start to take in their information. I'd be like, why is it not possible? And it just changed your thinking. But there's loads of different ways. And the biggest one is if you can set yourself an alarm. I said this on my uh, previous video on YouTube. If you can set yourself an alarm every single day for maybe three or four times a day, to just say, I love myself, just to remind yourself and get yourself into a habit, eventually habits run your life. We, ru we run 95% of our life through the subconscious, through habits. And if you're telling yourself every day at 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock and three o'clock, I love myself, eventually it will just become a normal program for you. How do, how do you stop it from being mechanical and really believing the words that you're saying to yourself? Because I imagine if you repeat it three times a day, all you all will it might become are just words that you, you, you repeat. How, mm. how do you make sure that you you actually have the intention behind the words? Yeah. So this essentially you have to be feeling what you're saying. So if you're if you're just standing there and saying I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, nothing's going to happen because you're not putting the emotion, you're not putting the feeling behind it. Whenever I use affirmations personally, I, I'm if, if I'm if I'm shouting them, I'm literally standing there, I'm feeling powerful, I'm saying I am happy and I'm getting myself in a confident state, my shoulders are rolled back, I'm feeling powerful, I'm feeling happy and I'm saying it with conviction. If someone's saying it and they're just going, I'm happy, I'm happy, just from their physiology alone, you can tell that this isn't, this isn't who, who they are, they don't believe it and the only way to truly allow it to come into your life is by fully believing it. You, you mentioned uh, meditation and in meditation they say often that what you focus on becomes part of your reality and so when you have negative thoughts you want to avoid focusing too much on these negative thoughts and, and, uh, and uh, redirect your focus on somewhere else and it seems like a recurring uh, theme that I see from people I interview like that is the subconscious like it seems like it comes often especially affirmations uh, seem to be one of the techniques that uh, 
uh, many coaches uh, have in mind when, uh, when it comes to reprogramming the subconscious. What mm -hmm. are the other ways that you can uh, change uh, your subconscious, your beliefs and things like that? So, I mean, there's multiple different ways because I'm studying NLP right now and there's many, many different techniques that, that it's essentially it's all about the five senses. If you can change your senses towards a feeling. Um, so there's, there's many different techniques from removing bad feelings to quitting bad habits to installing new habits. Essentially, if you can use more senses in what you're doing, so things like visualization, meditation, but the easiest one that everyone has the capability of doing is getting yourself into theta. So we have different brain waves. We have alpha, beta, theta, delta, gamma. And from, so naturally, every single person goes into theta. Uh, they go beta, which is a waking state, then to alpha, which is a more calm, relaxed state, then to theta. And this is a, a hypnosis state, uh, a very deep meditative state. But every single person goes into this every single morning when they wake up and every single uh, evening before the, uh, just as they are going to bed. So essentially, this is what I just did this this morning because it's now 4.40 in the morning. And before I always give myself at least half an hour before I, if I'm having a meeting, if I'm, if I'm going to the gym, whatever it is, I always give myself at least half an hour to an hour to do my meditations, to reprogram my mind and to just feed my mind with, with success, happiness, love, whatever it is. And so this morning, what I do is I listen, I listen to um, videos. They have binaural beats on them, which are just another way of, they're just a great, a great tool that I use. Um, and then I'm watching like successful videos and they're just making, they're inspiring me. Then I listen to motivation and because my mind is still going from theta to alpha to beta, I'm essentially tapping into the pure source of theta that we all have. We all have the ability to use this. So the first thoughts that you think in the morning, if they are negative, you're likely to have a negative day. If they are positive, if they are grateful, if they're empowering, if they are happy, then you're likely to have a much more uh, positive, impactful and happy day. So the biggest and most useful one I can use is gratitude. If you can feel grateful in the morning, you can have whatever you want because essentially the act of gratitude is you're, you're receiving something. Like for example, if you went to a restaurant and someone bought you a drink, you'd say thank you. And it, that's just normal. That's how we use the word thank you. So if you're, if you're just saying thank you to the universe, to wh whatever you believe, um, whether it's a higher power, whatever it is, if you're just saying thank you just out loud or you're saying it in your mind and you're truly feeling grateful and you're just sitting there and saying, I'm, I'm so grateful for everything in my life you're putting yourself into a state of gratitude. And in theta, it's a much more susceptible state for you to absorb. And you're yeah. absorbing gratitude into your subconscious. So that, that's interesting. So to recap, really, uh, it seems like your first thoughts in the morning are really important and you should mm -hmm. uh, focus them on things that are um, positive. And these things, the easiest way to find positive things is to look at gratitude and maybe have a gratitude journal or something like that, yeah. just to, to try to, to think of what are the small things. It doesn't have to be, like you mentioned, the universe or everything you have in your life, but I think also small things, especially for people who are not in a good situation right now, mm -hmm. there are still things that they can be grateful for and they should focus on these things because it yeah. will expand then uh, the... Um, the opportunities that they, they may have in their life yeah because the, and and that's that's what it starts with because when i first started on my journey i had no money no job no friends no, like nothing i lost everything but and that's where people they, they say but i don't have anything to be grateful for and i was like that's when you need to be grateful <laughs> the people that are grateful they don't need to be grateful because they they just are grateful the people that are struggling and the people that are that feel like they have nothing that's when you need to find gratitude. And like you say, it could be for the fact that you can see, it could be for the fact that you, you have um, a loved one in your life, for your pets, for the smallest of things. So can, can I ask you, when, uh, when you were in that uh, uh, dark moment, what, what, were you, what were the things that you were grateful for? So I was grateful for the fact I had a car, even though, even though it wasn't a very good car. I've still got it to this day, and it's lasted me for as long as possible, and I'm very grateful for things like that. I was grateful for the fact of my mindset and where I wanted to go. Now, I wasn't in the strongest place. I wasn't, I didn't have a strong mindset, but I knew my vision and I knew 
that's where I want to be. And if I can, if I can think that enough times, eventually it's going to happen. I was thinking, you know what? I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that although my family completely split in half and I lost a lot of my family, I was grateful for my mum and my sister because they were the two people I had in my life. I was grateful for the fact I could see. I was grateful for the fact I could breathe. I was grateful for the fact I could um, make choices in my life. I could walk, I could talk. And it really is, like you say, the smallest of things. If you can be grateful for, for them, then you can have more to be grateful for. Nice. That, that um, makes me uh, jump to the next topic, which is uh, purpose. You mentioned that you had a very clear vision and it can help, kind of helped you through, uh, through this moment. Um, how did you get to find your, your purpose? Especially you, you, you're younger than I am and yeah. purpose uh, took me a while. Um, what helped you? What, what, what are the things that uh, got, got you to, to where you are? Yeah. So for me, it was trauma. It was, it was just, it was life and then it just smacked me down so hard that I didn't really have a choice. So from a very young age, I, I, I used to live at home with my mum and my dad and my sister. And my dad was very, very aggressive from a very young age. And um, I'd come in and the house would be smashed up. Uh, the kitchen would be smashed up. There'd be glass everywhere. And I was used to this. Then fast forward to when I was 17, 18, roughly. My dad called me up one evening while he was drink driving and told me he was going to kill himself. Then all I heard was like glass smashing and... I, I assume that he crashed the car and killed himself. Then fast forward another few months, he would just go crazy at me and, and my friends if we were ever around the house. And then fast forward another few months, he beat up my mum and just it, it just, it just pretty much sent us into a spiral. I was at this point taking a lot of drugs. I was taking cocaine three or four times a week, uh, drinking all the time, smoking loads of weed. Like I was just in the wrong place completely. And It took me getting to the point of in my bed, I was sitting there shaking, no, no muscle on me at all. I was so thin, so skinny, and I was sitting there shaking. I sort of said to myself, I was like, I need to, I need to somehow make a change. And after all the shit, I, I, all the stuff that I realized, I was just thinking, I'm following my dad's footsteps. I'm being a builder. I'm drinking all the time. I'm getting angry all the time. I'm doing this. I'm do and I, just, I was just not going in the right place. So I just went, what can I do that is the complete opposite of what he's doing? So that's when I started to stop the drugs. Then, oh, and then since I've, I haven't drunk a drop of alcohol for a year now, and I've stopped smoking and all of that, and I start meditating. So just the complete opposite to who I was before. How did you find the source of education or uh, inspiration to know what you should be stopping and how to stop it? So this was Tony Robbins and okay. I will forever be in gratitude to Tony Robbins because I don't know how I came across him. I really don't have a clue. I started to watch a few videos on the law of attraction and I got the book, the secret. And then I found Tony Robbins because I saw meditation. I watched the Tony Robbins video. He said he meditated and I was like, if it's good, for, good enough for him, it's good enough for me. So he was one of the people that really impacted my life in a way that was like, you need to surround yourself with positive people. You need to stop complaining. You need to stop this. You need to start doing this. And that's where I just thought, if I want to live a successful life, if I want to live a great life. I need to change what I'm doing because I'm not living a great life. And there's no way if I continue doing what I'm doing that I'm going to live a great life. So I just started implementing everything he was saying. Then I went to one of his events and I manifested a free ticket to his event, a completely, a completely free ticket. And they're, they're like seven, 800 pounds. Someone just gave me a ticket and I was like, oh my God. I was like, the law of attraction works. Um, and yeah, as soon as I went to that, it's just been every day. It's just slowly breaking me down to cutting out the alcohol, cutting out the drink, cutting out the negative people, cutting out the toxic people. And I'd really only say this, the beginning of this year is when I've been starting to get around better people. I've been really improving my life. I've been really impacting other people's lives. Um, although I've been on my journey for three or four years, this has probably been the most breakthrough year and 2020 is probably the, hopefully the biggest one. <laughs> nice, nice. Thanks for, uh, for sharing that. I imagine it must be hard when you, uh, when you have a lot of negativity around you, you were talking about your, mm -hmm. your father, to, to, uh, to detach yourself from the negativity. Um, I mean, imagining some of the friends you had at the time were probably not as positive as uh, you, you wanted. 
how do you yeah. how do you detach how do you um, make that break so you have you have a choice in life realistically we have a choice to stay where we are or change it you 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 have that choice and a lot of people have said to me but do you not want to see your dad he's your dad at the end of the day and i said yes he might be my dad but just because he's related to me doesn't give him the right to be negative to be toxic and to tear me down so sometimes it's it's the hardest thing it is a hard thing to do if you've known like my friends i grew up with from school and they were my friends for 17 18 years and i just broke away from them. i haven't seen them for two or three years now and that's due to me being strong enough to say i if i want to live my best life i need to just go and i there's there's no there's no complaining about it there's no but what it but but i want to help them make it you can't physically help someone who doesn't want to be helped i i'm i and bearing in mind at that time i had a very weak mindset so i couldn't help someone that didn't want to be helped especially even now if i offer them the help if they don't want it that's perfectly fine i don't i don't expect them to want it but at the end of the day you have the choice and if you want to live a great life if you want to live your best life and you want to be happy you need to stop doing things that people want you to do that don't make you happy so for example for me going out to a club and drinking didn't make me happy i did it because everyone was doing it when i started to become self self aware and started understanding i don't enjoy it the next day i feel like 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 the worst what's the point of me doing it for me it was logical i started to see it and think i don't like drinking i don't like going out partying why am i doing it and some and that's the thing some people do like to do that so if you do like to do that that's not a problem at all like we we are all different people but it's becoming self aware and understanding are you doing things for the sake of doing things or are you doing it to genuinely make you happy or make you grow so yeah. you, you that's what you what you describe with strong mindset versus weak mindset a strong mindset someone who's uh, willing to say no so that uh, they focus more on the things that uh, they know will make them uh, happier yeah i think it would be someone who's self aware a strong mindset is self aware because yeah at the end of the day if you're self aware you you know I'm doing this for for the reason it's going to make me happy. For example, someone who likes to skydive. I'm going to skydive because I know it will make me happy. Whereas someone who's maybe scared of heights would say, I'm going to skydive because it will help me overcome a fear. Initially it won't make me happy. I will be so scared up until we jump out. But eventually I will lose that fear. So essentially you are growing. And if you're happy in life or you're growing in life, eventually the growth will make you happy again. um so whether it's listening to an audiobook i listen to audiobooks over and over and over and over and over again and i i even even when i left school i could barely read i literally had the reading age of about a, i don't know a 15 year old i just couldn't read and now i've read probably i've got a bookshelf of i don't know maybe five six books that i've read but i listen to audiobooks constantly i'm going through courses that i'm reading all the time and yeah what it comes down to is if you're willing to be happy or you're willing to grow I say and uh, self awareness how do you develop that uh, I'm I'm guessing meditation is a big part of uh, self awareness yeah so meditation is one great part of it but clarity on who you are first so in in my courses and when I um work with people I tend to go through things like it's called an enneagram and essentially it's a personality test and it deviates who you are as a person um when I figured out who I was I understood that I am an optimistic person. I am someone who can be very energetic and I am someone who can maybe be doing too many things at once. When I understood that I was like okay, let me cut back on the things that I'm doing, focus solely on one thing, and that was a big driver in my life and I realized okay, so now I know who I am, then it's getting a self-awareness of where I want to go and then it's just slowly mapping it out. But things like meditation, they really do help with self-awareness, meditation, yoga, um even just even just sitting there in thought every single day visualization there's so many different things that you can do and they just start to bring your aware they just expand your awareness they they help you question what you're doing they help you question why you're here and like like you say purpose isn't something that you just sort of think about and then you just come into it's normally through a very long time trauma and because my thing is always your message your message if you've been through a struggle that's how some of these great companies start and i can imagine the reason your company started was because you were thinking how can i be more productive and it was probably based on you first 
which then expanded into a business. That's how most businesses start. And that's how mine started was I was in such a bad place. If I can help myself, I can help other people so they don't have to struggle for, for five, six, seven years of their life. Yeah. Who do you, uh, who would you say, like, how would you describe the people you're coaching? So I, it varies. My main aim is I stick with millennials and I, I like, I like to coach the younger, but as of recently, I've been going into a much younger audience as well okay. via different platforms. And, but again, I have coached older people. I've coached, from, I'd say from physically coaching, like as, a, as, um, as, clients of mine and I say as friends of mine now from anywhere between 18 to about 40 but now I'm breaking into the younger market because I truly believe in the power of helping younger younger children as well and it's about adapting to them and just just being fun being energetic but also having an underlying message which is subconsciously programming them for self-love for confidence without them really knowing it <laughs> how do you how do you allow how what would you say is uh, different in uh, coaching a millennial from someone who's uh, older, like uh, I'm uh, 37, so I'm mm -hmm. just in between the millennial and uh, the non-millennial? Yeah. Um, how would you say, where, where, how does it differ? It, it depends on the person because there's so many different people. I mean, some people that are older can't accept what I've got to say, and I completely understand that because they... If they knew me, like, for example, one of my mum's friends, my mum asked if I could help her and she couldn't accept what I had to say, probably because she knew who I was before and knew that I was just a complete nightmare and probably just couldn't accept me as who I am now. But a lot of my friends, even, they're a lot older now. So I seem to resonate with older people anyway. And a lot of older people do get on with me. But in regards to coaching, it comes down to virtually it's all the same no matter what age it is if you can bring energy if you can bring them a joy if you can bring them value if you can bring them actual uh, like tangible results then it doesn't really matter the way you coach them as long as you make them feel great and you give them a result okay. it's gonna it's gonna they're gonna feel feel great at the end of the day it, it, it seems in the management field like there, there is a clear um category the millennials and you manage them differently and uh, yeah. i suspected that maybe there was also a different way of coaching millennials uh, like maybe I'm, their interests or the things that they are trying to fix in their lives are are different yeah i mean m millennials genuine generally are i'd say that the the world has had a massive split recently over the, the last 10 10 years and a lot of millennials are seen as not wanting to work and they want to do it for themselves. Even myself, when I was working a job, I was probably one of the worst people to, to be an employee. But when I work for myself, I'm happy to be up early. I'm happy to go to bed late in order to do what I need to do. And what it comes, it's, at the end of the day, it comes down to who they are as a person because there could be a 40 year old who is the, has the exact same mindset as someone who is 18. And I, I don't know, I don't really like to say, this is how I coach millennials and this is how I coach. Yeah, um, that's great. That's a, that's a good, uh, good answer. <laughs> yeah, uh, don't, don't feel bad about it. I think uh, it's, a, it's a very powerful answer you've got. Yeah. So uh, another thing you wanted to, to talk about and, um, and, I, I, and I like as well is uh, the concept of habits and negative mm. habits. And yeah. I, I, I think basically habits is a way to put yourself in autopilot so that you do the things over and over again without putting too much effort. Because mm -hmm. when we are inspired, we are full of energy. Maybe we watched a nice movie or a video on YouTube. So we've got that energy and we can probably accomplish anything. But after yeah. a few weeks, we've lost that initial spark and it's hard to, to keep at it. So that's where habits are really powerful because you brush your teeth every day. Even if you feel crap, you tend to still do uh, the, the brushing of your teeth. And there are a lot of these habits that you do every day that you don't think about and don't take any effort. So yeah, uh, building good habits, dis destroying uh, bad habits. Um, what do you suggest? How do we start with that? So there's a term called progressive extremism, and this is for creating habits or even destroying negative habits. And 
this was how I went vegan. This was how I started to meditate every day. This is how I go to the gym every day. And it's essentially, it means starting small. So whether you're a smoker, whether you're someone who just wants to go to the gym, if you, let's say you smoke 40 cigarettes a day. Now there's obviously, there's a lot of different things with smoking to, to take it out. There's loads of different techniques that you can use, but essentially a very simple one. And this is how I did it personally um, was I started cutting out one cigarette every few days. So I didn't go, maybe I was smoking 10, 11 cigarettes a day. I didn't go that to zero because it's not sustainable. If you can make it sustainable, you can make it easy. It makes it easier to make it a habit. Um, and yeah, if you can cut them out slowly, and this is how I went vegan, I started cutting out red meat. Then after that, I started cutting out chicken. Then after that, I started cutting out fish. Then I went to vegetarian. And then I went to vegan, but I went too fast. So I went back to vegetarian. And then after another two months, I went back to vegan. And I've been a vegan for maybe 10, 11 months now. So what it came down to was just after, after a while of doing the, the, the habit, just slowly cutting it out, it just makes it much easier. Um, and some people, for example, when they want to go to the gym, they start to train like they're a professional trainer. And there's nothing worse than training like a professional when you're still an amateur. And that's not derogatory at all. It's when anyone starts anything, you're most likely not going to be very good. And you just have to get into the habit of doing it and improve. So there's a great story of a guy who he was, he was severely overweight and his trainer was saying to him, instead of um, going to the gym for an hour every day, just show up to the gym, show up, have a shower, go home. For two weeks, just show up, have a shower, go home, get yourself into the routine of going to the gym. Then after that, he said, right, now, oh, it's been two weeks. Now, after the, every time you show up, do five minutes in the gym, shower, go home. Don't do any more because you want it to stay sustainable. You still want to turn up tomorrow. So whether he went on the treadmill for five minutes, whether he lifted some weights for five minutes. After that, then he started going to 10 minutes, then 20. And eventually he built up a routine, which was him going to the gym every day. And again, this is how I do it. Even sometimes now, I go to the gym for maybe 45 minutes, half an hour uh, every day. And I, st I was going for about an hour, but I was starting to lose the motivation. So I dropped my gym time, but I still turn up every day. Yeah. Regardless if I just go into the, uh, the jacuzzi and go in the hot tub or whatever it is, I will still turn up every single day without fail because I keep it as a habit. Even if I'm feeling rotten, even if I'm feeling really ill, um, which I mean rarely happens, but I did it not too long ago. I still turn up and I just go and sit in the spa or something like that just to just to get myself there. Okay, nice. Um, but like this concept of momentum as well is important. Uh, when I started working on my business on the side, uh, I, I was working full time, and if I stopped working on my business for one week, two weeks, it would be super hard for me to come back into into the mindset of working after hours and all that. So when I realized that, I decided to start doing very small changes every day. You know, maybe it would be some design, some colors, some, yeah. and it kept me uh, connected to my business and therefore getting back into the business and working on the business was a lot easier uh, if I kept that momentum. So, so momentum is, uh, is one thing. The concept of sustainability is important. And Tim Ferriss, who wrote The 4-Hour Body, yeah. Uh, has this one day where uh, you can cheat so so you 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 do your diet but there's one day a week where you can eat anything you want and mm -hmm. uh, that also helps you psychologically because you don't feel like you're uh, you're uh, constraining yourself too much because you you actually can eat yeah. everything you, you you want yeah so do, do you use any app or any tool to keep track of your habits i don't actually i really don't i've I feel like it would it could be a beneficial thing for me personally i i feel like i i like things written down so i've got a whiteboard in my in my uh, room and i like to if for example how i started listening to an audio because i listen to an audio book every single day um and i roughly do about a book a week and depending on how long the book is but every single day i was like how can i do this for 10 weeks let me just try it see if i can do a book a week for 10 weeks and there's different ways of doing creating habits and you can go progressive extremism, which is starting small, or if you, if you can really stomach it, which is actually what I'm doing uh, right now, I'm doing a productivity challenge for myself. And I did it for my followers on Instagram. And I said, if you can just go overproductive, you can overproduce, 
for one month, your work ethic will just increase that slight bit. And if you can just do that, it will just start to increase that slight bit. And now I'm producing two YouTube videos a day. Um, I'm studying for my NLP. I'm, I'm booking calls. I'm booking calls every single, or trying to book every calls every day. Um, I'm really just trying to improve my productivity. And yeah, with the audio books for 10 weeks, I just said, if I can do a book a week, I don't care if I take the knowledge in, I just want to get the, the habit of doing a book a week. And within those 10 weeks, I did that. And I did 10 books in 10 weeks. And now, ever since, I've listened to an audiobook every single day on my way home from the gym, which gives me roughly, I think, about 20 minutes, 25 minutes of an audiobook listening time. So every day, I'm always listening to something educational. But it came down to, yeah, me just writing it out and giving myself a challenge and just going for it. Because I think challenging yourself is quite important because we are natural cr creatures of uh, we, we are competitive and if you can challenge yourself against yourself especially of who you were yesterday then you're going to improve dramatically within the space of one month two months three months you you mentioned some of the audio books and books what, what um, which ones did you like the most or impacted your way of thinking the most mm. so my favorite book of all time of two, two of them think and grow rich and how to win friends and influence people and I truly believe in the power of repetition. Again, it programs your subconscious. The more you listen, the more you take in. And a great quote from Wayne Dyer is, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And sometimes there's something in the book that you never thought about because you didn't understand the concept. Yeah. When you listen to the book the third, the fourth time, there's something in there that you're like, ah, oh, that makes sense now. That really makes sense. And because I used to be a very unconfident person, how to influence and influence people was one of the most powerful things that allowed me to interact with people because I was so shy and anxious all the time. I couldn't speak to strangers. Even doing something like this was impossible for me. I hated speaking to people on the phone, let alone over a video call. Um, and that was probably one of the biggest books that impacted my thinking and how to interact with people. But Think and Grow Rich was definitely one of the books that helped me with my vision and understanding that if I want something, I can have it. It may, take, it may take one year, it may take 10 years, it may take 20 years, but if you have that, that burning desire, you have the, the hunger for it, you will get it eventually. So coming back on the uh, influence, your, uh, what's the full title? How, Is how, how to, to uh, influence and make friends? No. Yeah, how to win friends and influence people. Okay. Um, what are the, like, I, I've read it as well, and I didn't feel impacted by it the first time I, I, I read it. What are mm. some of the, like I remember some of the things like the sandwich, I think, where you say something positive, then something negative, then something positive again, when you mm. want to give feedback to someone. Um, what are the, the, the tips that you read from the book that uh, you've uh, applied in instantly? Yeah, so there's quite a few psychology uh, tips in there as well. Things that they actually use in NLP, which I've understood. And there's things, for example, of, being genuinely interested in another person and like some people you, you overlook it and you really don't think about it too much but when you're genuinely interested in someone you don't talk about yourself because people like to talk about themselves we are selfish by nature and that's not saying everyone is selfish but we just like to talk about ourselves if someone asks us what's your biggest achievement you can ramble on and on and on not because you like to talk about it we are the most and, important uh, person in our lives yeah exactly exactly and if you can if you can be genuinely interested in that topic now it doesn't mean you have to be a master in the topic like for example in the book the, there was an example and um i believe it was the child i can't remember the exact who the character was who was uh, talking about it but he was the the guy who was seeing his mum or something like that as a relationship or whatever it was was saying was just interested in the fact that the boy was very interested in boats and she was like, he was like, oh, he's really interesting. He's really interested, blah, 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 all of this. And she, the mum said to him, she was like, he doesn't know anything about boats. He just knows that you're interested about boats and you now like him because you're interested about the boats and you're talking about what you want to talk about. Um, and then a great other uh, example is never argue with someone, even if they're wrong, especially if you've met them for the first time. And this was a great concept depending on what the what they're talking about because for example say someone was saying 
that that's a green light and you're like no it's a red light on the traffic lights like there's 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 within reason but if someone is if you've met someone for the first time and straight away you're saying no you're wrong their immediate preconception of you is i don't like that person because even if your family members start saying you're wrong initially you're probably thinking i don't even like you and you think that straight away don't you but obviously when they're your family give yourself about 10 minutes you come back around you're like okay i do love them <laughs> um but if you can if you could just say to people okay yeah i agree e even if they are wrong they they will they're eventually or you can even uh, challenge them and say things like oh that's an interesting idea um let's 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 study the facts and that was in the book as well let's study the facts and see see what see what the the actual facts are of this topic and then not making them feel bad for being wrong and saying, oh no, I thought that before, I generally thought that as well, until I heard this concept and things like that. So it's just about understanding people and there's little tricks that you can use, for example, the way you, the way you talk, the gestures that you move, um, your tonality of voice, um, matching a mirror in people. So for example, if someone's, if someone's sitting like that and you're having a conversation, if you're sitting like this, you're not building rapport with them. If you're if you're sitting in the same way, if you're talking in the same voice um, as much as possible, yeah. then you start to build better rapport. And the better rapport you build with people, the likely you are to build relationships, friendships, uh, business partnerships, whatever it is. I think I think uh, that aspect is true in both ways. Where the more interested you are in the person in the conversation, you tend to mm. actually mirror the person without realizing it. So. Mm -hmm. So there's this thing where you can actually consciously say, okay, I'm going to do what that person is doing so that uh, she feels that uh, I'm uh, as interested as, uh, as, as that person. But yeah. the, other way, uh, the other way around is also true, is that if you genuinely are interested in the, in the topic, you'll see, you'll catch yourself being in the same position as the other person. So, yeah. um, so I find, I find that, that it goes both ways. Definitely, definitely. I mean, there's so many different psychology tricks that you can use in order to create and sustain better relationships. And yeah, when you start to understand them, I mean, there's so, there's so much that I've learned of NLP and we naturally, we start to, we mirror other people. Like you say, we do naturally do it. And there's a great thing that a lot of um, like speakers do when they're on stage and they will say, put a circle on your finger and now put it on your chin or like that. And everyone copies them and puts it on their cheek. And he's like, are you seeing that you're like, this is your chin. You know, this is your chin, but you're copying what I'm doing. And loads of people do that. And they're all like, why did I even think of that? When you start to become more self-aware, like whenever I hear that, I'm straight on my chin because I know I, I understand it now. And it's just one of those things. But we naturally mirror and match people yeah. that we're talking to, especially if we're in rapport, because that's how you keep rapport. Because if you start to break rapport in a sense of if you were, every time you lean forward, I leant back eventually you start to get slightly wound up in your head and you'd be like, I just don't like how this conversation is going. Yeah. And um, so that, that, that's for the, the, the books. Um, who are your uh, personal heroes? You mentioned Tony Robbins. Do you have mm -hmm. other people that uh, you, 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 uh, you look like, like they, they are role models for, for you? Yeah. So Tony Robbins, by all means, my f just a god in my life. I absolutely love that man. Um, people like Jay Shetty absolutely love his stuff. Um, going from, he, he came from a very similar background to myself as well. And I think that's what it is. It's relating to my background is Tony Robbins, a very similar background. When I listen to his story again, Jay Shetty came from a very similar background of drugs, um, just not in the right place and then went to go be a monk. And, and now he's doing what he's doing now. Um, and there's even other people like, for example, Ellen DeGeneres, I absolutely love how caring and giving she is and especially what she's been through i think they're probably the three biggest impact even though they're all completely different people they yeah. still impact me in different ways uh, um, thanks uh thanks a lot it was a great no chat uh, appreciate nice you having to, me on nice to see uh your your perspective on things uh, different from uh, from mine but uh like uh that's why I, I enjoy doing these things is everybody has mm. different opinions and uh, Steve, uh, Steve Covey has a great example where he says when you have uh, a group of people and five of them have the same opinion and one person has a different opinion, 
you have four people who have uh, who are useless basically it's it's mm. just the, the two differing opinions that are giving uh, some value to the group because yeah, it allows you to to look at uh, things differently so um, yeah th thanks a lot amazing amazing and uh, and good luck uh, good luck with your uh, your venture i think uh, thank you very much um, you're going to uh, to do great thank you, you very much i really appreciate it and likewise uh, I, I, I had a look at your website i had a look at all that you're doing and it's a brilliant concept absolutely brilliant concept thank you. and i can see you see that you're already doing very well and just see that in the future it's all it can do is one <laughs> one incline that's all it is yeah for, for like what i wanted to 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 say about what i got from you is that all the foundational concept that you're talking about are, are really important and i think uh, mm. um it will uh, make your coaching practice it will help with your coaching practice because they, they are very important and they will work with everybody you know like uh, they, yeah. they are so foundational yeah. so uh, so yeah good, good luck and uh, i'll uh, i'll keep in touch with you okay thank you very much have an amazing day all right you too see you see you soon